Hello, welcome back to the Clyde Guide. Today I'm going to be making for my lunch chicken parmesan, uh, chicken parmesan if you wish. And it takes about 20 minutes, maybe 25, and it's a big meal. It will satisfy me completely and it's very, very tasty. Now, as always, remember I have thoroughly washed my hands. All of these work surfaces have been scrupulously cleaned and all of the food has been out of the refrigerator for at least an hour. So the first thing we're going to do is put some spaghetti in. Now, how much spaghetti do you ask? Well, there's only one of me. So you don't want to overdo it and it's very easy to do. So you want about a wedding ring, a female wedding ring of pasta. Okie dokie, look at that. So about the size of your ring finger, that's going to be plenty. The other thing that's important to do is to salt the boiling water now. Now the only thing I did before you got here was I put two pans of water on to get to the boil. One for the spaghetti, one for the vegetables. The first thing I'm going to do is put a really good slug of salt in the, the spaghetti water. And I, I mean, you know, like so much, okay? And you put it in now, because if you put it in afterwards, the spaghetti won't take it. So you want to put it in now, and you also want to get the spaghetti going, because that's going to take the longest of all the things. So here's my ring finger size spaghetti. So in it goes, and we wait for it to soften slightly. It's easy to work it with a wooden spoon. There we are. Now the other thing, good trick for you, you'll notice I've only three quarters filled the pan with water. The other trick is to put a little glug of olive oil in the water and that will stop or help to stop the spaghetti from sticking together. Pop the lid on that. Fantastic. Now we can put the spaghetti away. Won't need that again. Time to prepare our vegetables. Now I'm having carrots and broccoli with my chicken parmesan. We won't need any more carbohydrate because the spaghetti and the breadcrumbs will take care of that. So I've got about 10 Chantonet carrots here. They are absolutely nutty and delicious. Just chop the, the tops off and bung them in the steamer. And next we're going to prepare our broccoli and always cut away from you, remember? Always. So just slice through the broccoli at the top of the stalk to release the florets and there we are. Those can go in. They will take a little less time than the spaghetti will. I'm just going to chop through here. I don't mind a bit of stalk on my broccoli. I don't know how you feel about that. So you cut it to your own taste. And that is plenty for my meal today. So on goes the lid and that will steam away nicely. And those will take about the same length of time as the spaghetti. Now we can turn our attention to preparing the chicken. And over here you will see I've put a, a plate with some plain flour on it, an egg and some golden breadcrumbs. Now I don't, I don't make breadcrumbs, I buy them uh, and so should you. So the first thing we need to do is just whip up this egg a little bit. Always break the egg, like I just did, on a flat surface. Do you know why? because then you won't get any shell in your egg. Good tip? Yes! Okay, just beat that up. Fantastic. I'm using a uh, chicken breast uh, that I have defrosted because I bought it frozen and it's in uh, one of these Ziploc Baker foil zip zipper bags, okay? And what I'm going to do 
is give it a damn good thrashing. Now, I use a meat hammer. If you don't have a meat hammer, use a little saucepan. It, it's fine, you don't need one. But that's what I'm going to do. So just watch carefully. And I'm just going to... See, look, if you've got a saucepan... Fantastic. That can go back in the coffin. So, out comes our now somewhat flattened chicken breast and into the flour. Okay, now whilst that's in there, I'm going to put some black pepper on the breadcrumbs. Not too much, just a sousal. And now make sure that the chicken breast is completely floured. Okay, you can see how easy that is to do. That flour won't go to waste. Now, into the egg. Make sure it's completely coated. There we are. Oh, lovely jubbly. Wallop. up. And now, onto the breadcrumbs. And we'll just uh, shake a few more on the top here. Again, none of this will go to waste. And breadcrumb the chicken breast, just like that. That's now all ready to go. I'm going to rinse my fingers. Now, just a light log of, I'm using olive oil today. You can use any oil you like. You don't need a lot in this pan, but the breadcrumbs are going to take it up. So we might need to put a second log in a little later and put some heat under this pan. Now today I'm using a cast iron pan. That's my choice. I really like them. Get the flame under that. But you have to be careful with a cast iron pan because the handle is an integral part of the pan and it will get very, very hot. So you can get one of these, a silicon handle cover. I don't find those very convenient. I prefer an oven glove. I'm going to show you, I've got my Breville hand blender here. You know I'm quite fond of these and, it, and the container that comes with it. And what we're going to do, just get a piece of kitchen roll ready to stand it on when I finish whizzing. We're going to open a tin of chopped tomatoes and we're going to put those in the hand blender like so. Wallop. And we're going to gently blend them up. We're going to pop our chicken in, okay? Sizzle. That's what you want to hear. Nice, gentle sizzle. And there we go. Right, we want a fish slice so that we can lift up this chicken portion. Run the oil around carefully using the pan. Flip that over. So that isn't entirely cooked yet. But we're going to do it on both sides to get it going nicely. And now we can just stick a knife in that broccoli. See how it's doing. Yeah, that's tenderizing nicely. The carrots are tenderizing nicely. That's nearly done. Now, whilst that is happening, I'm going to put the grill on or the broiler if you're in the States. it over again. Yeah, that side is beautifully done. Look at that. Golden brown. That's what we want. Depends how thick or thin you beat it out. Oh yes, it's coming along nicely. Some people 
clean, they like spaghetti al dente. Eh, I'm not sure about that. I like it a little bit better done than that, just a bit softer. So, what we're going to do now is put some of this passata on the top of the chicken parmesan. Don't forget, even though I've turned the heat off, it's still cooking because it's a cast iron pan or skillet. So there. Now, I was going to put some cream cheese on there, but I've decided against that because my parmesan is very, very rich and creamy. So open that packet. And now I'm going to grate with my very fine cheese grater, my parmesan grater, a, a really good layer of parmesan onto the top of the chicken portion. Again, you put on as much or as little as you like. I like. And the time has come now to put this under the grill or under the broiler. Like so. I've got a colander ready to strain the spaghetti. I'm going to get my nice warm plate. Remember I use nine inch plates and that's because I'm not as active as I used to be when I was young and so I don't need quite as much food now uh, because I don't have such a hectic lifestyle. So I re I've cut my portion size down by using smaller plates. So when it's, when it's on the plate, the plate is heaped and it looks massive, but it would actually probably only half fill a regular sized dinner plate. It's psychological, but trust me, it does help. That is going perfectly. So we can turn off this bag and strain it. Beautiful. Make sure you've got all the water out and then put it back in the pan. And then spoon that passata and mix it up with the spaghetti. See, see that? Beautiful. So here's my dinner plate. I'm going to put the spaghetti there, like so. I'm going to put the veggies. Oh, beautiful those there like so that's quite a lot of veg but you know what it's good for me and now we can turn the grill off get my oven glove there is my chicken parmesan that's going on top of this bed of spaghetti and there my friends is my lunch with Chantenay carrots and broccoli on a bed of tomato infused spaghetti and I'm starving. Enjoy, I'll see you for the next episode.